So one big problem I find with um, when people have diabetes is that a lot of people don't actually understand what they're suffering from. You're told your blood sugar is high and here are some drugs and if you're lucky they may tell you, okay, you need to lose weight. And that's about it. That's it. And you go get your drugs and take them. That's where it ends. But most people don't actually understand the disease at all. Okay, so basically diabetes is a chronic progressive disease that leads to high blood sugar. All right. Now, there are two words that are important there. One is chronic and one is progressive. Okay, those two words. Chronic means something that is of long duration. Okay, you don't just sit down and one day, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I've got diabetes. No, 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 no. It doesn't happen like that. This is something that's been happening for years, ever before you had any sign. It has been creeping up on you for years. So it's a chronic disease. It's long lasting. It goes on for, you know, years, decades, that kind of thing. Now, the second word I said you should take note of is the word progressive, right? Progressive doesn't mean forward thinking. All right. Progressive as in something that keeps moving forward in that your blood sugar with time will continue to go up. All right. It's not a positive thing in this context. It's a negative thing. Progressive in this situation means your blood sugar will continue to go up over time. The most common way that we di um, diagnose diabetes is with the fasting blood sugar. It's quite easy to do. It's relatively cheap. You can do it almost everywhere, you know. And um, usually what happens is that you fast overnight and then in the morning your blood is drawn and the test is done. Now, if you have a blood sugar less than 100, that's said to be normal, okay? If it's 100 to 125, then that's pre-diabetic. Once it gets to 126 and above, that's the diabetic zone. There are three main types of diabetes. Um, when we talk about diabetes, there are lots of different kinds of diabetes. We're talking about diabetes mellitus, all right? Now, diabetes mellitus, there are three major types, okay? Three major categories. You have type 1 diabetes, you have type 2 diabetes, and you have gestational diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, there's very little or complete absence of the hormone insulin. I'll talk more about insulin later, okay? So just remember type 1 diabetes, there's very little insulin or none at all. Type 2 diabetes, there's lots of insulin, but the insulin is not doing the job that it's supposed to do, all right? Then you have gestational diabetes. Gestation is pregnancy. So this occurs only in women, obviously, and it occurs during pregnancy because of um, the changes that take place in the body, the chemicals that are produced to sustain that pregnancy tend to raise the blood sugar and some people cannot cope with that blood sugar rise and bring it down. So they develop diabetes in pregnancy. So who gets diabetes? Basically, mostly adults older than 40 years of age. I say mostly. Occasionally, you know, but mostly adults who are 40 years and above. Men get it, women get it across the board. If you have a, either a mother, a father, brother or sister that has diabetes, you're more likely to get diabetes. But the thing to be careful about here is that you may feel that, okay, nobody in my family has diabetes, so I'm not going to get it. It doesn't work that way. There are people who develop diabetes who don't have any relative right? Any close, close relative, what we call a first degree relative that has diabetes. So don't, you know, kind of like get comfortable feeling that, mm, well, nobody in my family has it. I can't get it. No, there are people that get it without any family history. All right. And then um, the groups of people that are more likely to get uh, diabetes are uh, people of color. Okay. Like Africans, South Americans, Asians, Pacific Islanders, all those people who are not white Caucasian, they are more likely to get diabetes. Now, um, type 2 diabetes is the most common type of diabetes 
upwards of 80 90 percent of cases of diabetes are type 2 diabetes so basically what i'm talking about now is type 2 diabetes okay because that is the most common one what are some of the signs some of the symptoms some of the things that you may experience when you have diabetes extreme thirst extreme hunger extreme tiredness you may notice that your vision is a bit hazy, you know, things aren't, you know, crystal clear when you look at them. You may also notice that um, your wounds don't heal as fast as they used to. Something that would have healed before in maybe two days, four days, five days later, the wound hasn't healed. There are some things that are a bit more peculiar um, with regards to men in that they experience a diminished sex drive. The sex drive just goes down and then um, they may suffer from erectile dysfunction. That's, you can't get an erection and you can't maintain it, okay? Then in women, um, women are more likely to develop um, yeast infections, candidiasis, uh, more likely to have urinary tract infections, that's um, infections over the, the bladder and up, the, up to the kidneys. Um, they also tend to have um, very dry, flaky skin, some of them they experience that. So there are things that can go wrong in the body as a result of this high blood sugar, this diabetes, all right? Now, the, the complications, right, they affect the whole body. This is a disease that affects the whole body. It's difficult to find any part of your body that's not affected by this disease. But I'll just take a few of them, a few of the complications, and basically we're going from head to toe, okay? start with strokes you're more likely to have a stroke if you're diabetic and people you know they're like but a stroke that's that's for hypertension no if you have diabetes you're more likely to have a stroke okay you're more likely to have uh, problems with your memory you know um you may just think of it as a little bit of forgetfulness here and there maybe you forget your keys or you forget where you drop something and then it progresses to the extent where you may not even recognize your wife, your husband, your children, you know, your brothers and sisters, people that you've known for decades, you may not even recognize them. They'll be like complete strangers to you. And by the time it's progressed to that degree, it's known as dementia. And Alzheimer's is the most common form that's associated with the whole um, diabetes scene. Okay. Then that blurred vision, that hazy vision may actually progress to, to blindness, complete blindness, right? You may have um, deafness or uh, a continuous, like somebody, you know, like an electric bell, like somebody pressing a bell next to your ear continuously, nonstop, all right? Some people have that. Um, you may have a heart attack, and um, this may cause sudden death, depending on which part of the heart is affected, which of the vessels is affected, all right? You may have problems with your kidneys. Now, the kidneys, what they do is they actually filter the blood okay and they take out the poisonous substances the things that you don't need and push them into the urine and they go out of the body that way uh, when your kidneys cannot perform this function then you have to be hooked up to a machine okay and what the machine does is that it takes your blood you know cleans it filters it and then the blood is put back into the body okay and that's dialysis if your kidneys aren't functioning properly and you have to do dialysis um that's usually like twice a week at least okay you're supposed to have that twice a week and that is for life once the kidneys lose their function to the extent that you need dialysis that's it that is for life okay and the only way around that is to have a kidney transplant and another problem um, that may arise from the diabetes is um, the loss of sensation you know uh, particularly the fingers and the toes all right you can't you can't feel hot or cold. Things happen to your, your hands, your feet, and you don't even know because you can't feel anything, all right? You may also have that sensation, you know, like um, if you're the kind of person that goes to the toilet with your phone, okay, and you sit on the toilet for so long that by the time you get up, your legs are feeling somehow, they're shaky, or you have that um, sensation of pins, someone's poking pins into your, into your feet, into your legs. So some people may develop something like that, okay? And then remember we said that wounds don't heal fast, right? So that is a big problem because 
If the wound doesn't heal properly, that's a defect, it's open. So bacteria now get inside there. And with your high blood sugar, you're just giving food to the bacteria. The bacteria are just thriving and multiplying because of that sugar environment. They love the sugar. They love that sugar. So they just take over and keep growing and growing and growing until eventually the foot is so infected that it actually rots, okay? And it has to be cut off. So that's why sometimes um, people with diabetes end up with amputations, all right? And that has to be done to prevent the disease from just spreading all over because um, a lot of people actually die from that. One thing that's important for you to know is that um, these complications, you know, they don't happen overnight. And in a way, that's dangerous. In a way, that's also good, you know, because when something's happening just gradually, little by little, you don't, you, you don't really pay attention. You know, gradually your sight may become just not, not quite as clear as it was. And you think, okay, maybe it's old age, you know. So a lot of these things, they just come on gradually, you know, just like the memory loss. You just say, mm, oh, it's old age, you know. Just, they just come on little by little by little. And by the time you actually take notice, it's progressed so far that you can't reverse it. And on the other hand, the fact that these things come on gradually means that if you act fast at the beginning, then you can actually stop them from developing or stop them from getting worse. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, the next thing is that these things are happening, these complications are happening even while you're taking your drugs. The people that have heart attacks, the people that have strokes, they weren't taking their medicine. They were. The people that develop gangrene um, problems with their feet and the infections, weren't they taking their medicine? Most people are still taking their medicine and they still have these complications. And that, that's, that's rather unfortunate. Okay, so those are the two things that you, you need to take note of. The fact that the complications, they come on gradually. And two, that even while you're taking drugs, these things are still going wrong. Now, I know I've been talking for a long time, but there is um, something that I really, really need to talk about. I really want to um, uh, mention. Sometimes when people get diagnosed with diabetes, they actually become depressed. We don't like to talk about things like that because, you know, it's a mental thing. We don't talk about things like that. We just, you know, brush it under the carpet and keep it secret. But it shouldn't be like that especially when someone has lost a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a close friend, you know, someone they care about to diabetes. Having that diagnosis, being told that you have diabetes, it's a terrible thing because watching someone that you love go through that whole diabetes thing and eventually losing that battle, it's excruciatingly painful. It is agonizing to watch. And sometimes when someone has gone through that and then they get that diagnosis for themselves, the kind of thoughts that will be going through your mind, everything you'll be recounting, the, the experience of that person that you lost, it will be going around in your head and all sorts of thoughts and you just cannot control them. Different people react to trauma in different ways. Okay? And that diagnosis is trauma, it is an injury. So if anybody has ever experienced that depression, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not weak-willed, you're not weak-minded, you're not lacking in fortitude, no. Everybody's different. So I just wanted to point that out because people, people feel all these emotions and because of the way that they think that they'll be viewed by the people around them, they just keep them bottled up and they don't say anything and they just suffer in silence. And that should not be. So with all these things that I've said about what can go wrong when you have diabetes, you can understand why when I saw those numbers on the meter, when I saw pre-diabetes, you can understand why I was disturbed. And when I started making the changes to my lifestyle that actually brought down my blood sugar and just sorted out my health problems, there were times when Mm, I was less than motivated, let's put it that way. I just, I just, I just didn't feel like it. I was like, mm, not today, I beg, not today, it's enough, I'm tired. But I had reasons 
why. I asked myself, why are you doing this thing? Why are you trying to change your life in this way? Why are you trying to get back your health? And I actually sat down, took paper and wrote them down. I wrote down my reasons why. Because if you're going on a journey, for goodness sake, you, you should know why you're going. There must be a reason. In the same way, when you're fighting this battle against diabetes, when you're fighting to get back your health, you need to know why you're doing it. So I sat down and I wrote down a whole host of reasons. I hate taking drugs. Then I didn't want to be a burden to my family. I didn't want them to be worrying about me and you know, oh, is mom okay? How is she doing? I didn't want any of that, all right? And then I want to live a life full of energy, full of adventure, full of new things, full of exploration, you know, to actually live life, not just be alive, right? But to live life to the fullest. That's just a few of the things that I wrote down for myself. Because you need to know why you're doing something. You need to have reasons. Otherwise, the slightest thing that comes along, you'll be derailed. You'll just give up. So I'm going to give you some assignments for today's training, all right? Put your um, answers in the comments, all right? Number one, do you have high blood sugar? Yes or no? If you have high blood sugar, when you found out, when you were given the diagnosis, when you were told your blood sugar is high, how did you feel? Number three, write down some powerful reasons why. Why do you want to bring down your blood sugar? Why do you want to bring down your blood pressure? Why do you want to lose weight? Why, why, why? Just three. You can put the ones you're comfortable sharing. You don't have to share everything, anything you're not comfortable with, just keep it for yourself. But the ones that you feel that you can share, go ahead and share them with us. Three powerful reasons why. Okay, that's your assignment for today. With all this talk of diabetes, we hear a lot about blood sugar, right? And that is, that is in order. We should talk about the blood sugar. <laughs> Having a high blood sugar is extremely toxic to the body. It's very dangerous. Your body does not like that high blood sugar, okay? So it is a conversation definitely we should be having. We should be talking about the blood sugar. But there is something that happens before the blood sugar starts rising, right? Before anything happens to your blood sugar, there's something that's happening in your body before it happens. And most people are completely clueless about this. They have no idea. And I'm going to talk about that next time. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.